Good Friday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside what everybody's talking about, and that's weather. So let's check our weather window. And this is the, about the only shot we had from this afternoon because everything else was just socked in because of the rain and the snow, mostly snow as we look down uh, downtown Wenatchee. And you can see, yeah, there was a lot of snow around the area today. The Cascades obscured from all that snow. It began this morning and then really picked up about new time and then let up. But once again, we had some misty rain mixed in with that snow and I'll tell you what we are in for some significant winter weather not just today's storm system there are more coming our direction in fact we'll see a little bit of a snow as we get into our weekend tomorrow morning and then some more snow in fact a pretty good size storm system moving in once again on Sunday that'll bring us about a 60% chance for snow Monday a slight chance for snow showers and then after that much much colder temperatures and we will talk more about that coming up a little a little bit later on in your weather forecast. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Quincy police are trying to find the person who crashed a pickup through a wrought iron fence and then ran into a yard early this morning, then abandoned the vehicle. Wenatchee police believe a local man downloaded more than 100 images of child pornography and the Wenatchee School Board will be back up to five members next week after two new members were chosen by the three sitting members at last night's meeting. But first we begin tonight. A Wenatchee man who served jail time for gang related stabbing is in jail again tonight for allegedly causing a police chase and a standoff. 26 year old Mitchell Figueroa Ibarra refused to stop when police attempted to pull his vehicle over on suspicion of DUI. That was about midnight. Uh, in Instead, he allegedly sped away, stopped his car at an East Wenatchee home, and then ran inside. The residents fled to safety, but Figueroa allegedly refused to come out for more than an hour before finally surrendering early Friday. Figueroa was sentenced in 2012 to seven years in prison for stabbing another Wenatchee man nine times. Wenatchee police said they found a meth pipe and a handgun in the car that he was driving. Quincy police are trying to find the person who crashed a pickup through a wrought iron fence and then into a yard early this morning, then abandoned the vehicle. The accident happened about 2.15 a.m. on the corner of C Street Southeast and 1st Avenue Southeast. Police found the heavily damaged 2007 Chevrolet Avalanche with both the driver and passenger side airbags deployed and traces of blood. The registered owner of the pickup lives near the scene, but police have been unable to to locate that person. Wenatchee police believe a local man downloaded more than 100 images of child pornography. Jose Antonio Mendoza was arrested Thursday morning near his Wenatchee home as police arrived to, uh, arrived to serve a search warrant. Mendoza's online platforms reported traffic on his accounts of sexually explicit images of children. He remained jailed Friday in the Chelan County Regional Justice Center. Mendoza faces five possible felony charges. The Wenatchee School Board will be back to five members next week after two new members were chosen by three sitting members at last night's meeting. Maria Inguez and Julie Norton were chosen to replace the two board members who left in recent weeks. Iniguez is the executive assistant to Wenatchee Valley College President Jim Richardson. Meanwhile, Norton is an attorney with the Ogden Murphy Wallace Company. The two were chosen after the board interviewed seven finalists that were narrowed down from a list of 14 applicants. Iniguez and Norton will be sworn in this Tuesday before the regular board meeting. Coming up next, Chelan County officials are hoping to entice development of more affordable housing through tax sheltered opportunity zones. If you've ever had trouble finding a place to park in downtown Wenatchee, the city has a message for you. Watch for the apple. We'll tell you about that. And we'll take a look at what's happening around the valley for you to enjoy this weekend. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710.
Are you like many who are lacking in their retirement plan, but are skeptical to talk to an advisor? Are you concerned about where you should put your money or who to trust? At Solomon Financial, we are more about the people we serve than policies or products. We are a fee-based fiduciary with the mission of giving you the peace of mind so you can live the retirement of your dreams. If you have any of these questions or concerns, we'd welcome you to come see us. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back. In another news, Chelan County officials are hoping to entice development of more affordable housing through tax-sheltered opportunity zones. The program was created by Congress as part of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017. The opportunity zones are intended to spur economic development in areas that are designated as impoverished or underserved. County Commissioner Kevin Overbay says one of the components of the program includes investment in low-income housing projects. There's multiple ways in which a, a uh, opportunity funds can be spent, and you know you can look at private-public partnerships with regards to housing. And I'll use an, uh, an article that just came out uh, last week, or a story that broke last week about the Cascadian. We'll use that as an example. You know, we have HUD housing there that's going mm -hmm. to be in effect for the next year, and then we're going to have 85 folks that potentially, you know, may be looking for a place to live, you know, because of their limited income, and you know that would no longer necessarily fit that. So how do we look? at opportunities within those zones to say, you know what, can we as a government entity be able to facilitate, whether it be uh, funding that comes in from the Department of Commerce through community development block grants, uh, funding that we currently have through our 09 funding, or other funding sources to potentially purchase property and then work with a developer to where they can invest into that property to seek a return, but we're able to do it at a lower rate because then we have already put the initial investment into the property. Gotcha. And so, and then be able to turn that over to an entity for management and eventual ownership like the housing authority. And so what that does is that increases capacity. So there's a philanthropic side and then there's a regular investment return side. The counties of Chelan, Douglas, Okanagan, and Ferry, along with the Colville Nation, have combined to form the North Star Opportunity Zone. Chelan County's point man in the process has recently hired Economic Development Director Blake Baldwin. My role uh, as Economic Development Director for the county is really serving as a liaison between the county, and particularly the Board of County Commissioners uh, and, and other community groups, whether that be the Port District, who is the designated ADO, which stands for um, the Associated Development Organization. So they receive funding from, um, now that our regional port receives funding from both Chelan and Douglas counties um, as our designated economic development entity. So my role isn't necessarily to duplicate the efforts of the, efforts of the port, but to really serve as a complementary, um, in a complementary role, kind of working as community liaison. So when it comes to North Star Opportunity Zone, I've been uh, joining um, Commissioner Overbay and just kind of acting as a as a liaison between the between the, the North Star group and as a staff a staff level member um, and, and the Board of County Commissioners. Baldwin and Overbay appeared on a recent In Focus interview with NCW Life special correspondent Steve Hare. That interview is available on demand at ncwlife.com. Well, if you've ever had trouble finding a place to park in downtown Wenatchee, and who hasn't, the city has a message for you. Watch for the Apple. Crews this winter have been installing Apple emblazoned signs at its free, uh, free lots on Palouse, Worthen, and 2nd Streets. As time allows, they'll be putting up directional signs on Wenatchee and Chelan Avenues, as well as Mission Street, directing motorists to those lots. The city says the goal is to improve the downtown experience and encourage long-term parkers to use off-street lots. Let's check in with NCW Life's Megan McPherson now for a look at what's happening around the valley for you to enjoy this weekend. 
Here's a look at what's on tap this weekend around the Wenatchee Valley. Exit Laughing by Paul Elliott and directed by Mike Magnotti is being performed now through Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at the Riverside Playhouse. When the biggest highlight of your life for the past 30 years has been your weekly card night out with the girls, what do you do when one of your foursome inconveniently dies? If you're Connie, Leona, and Millie, you do the most daring thing you've ever done. You borrow the ashes from the funeral home for one last card game in the wildest, most exciting night of their lives. Get your tickets at numericapack.org. The Eastmont High School versus Wenatchee High School Basketball Showcase is this Friday from 2 to 8 at the Town Toyota Center. This showcase is presented by Ballard Ambulance. Open auditions for the 2020 Hot August Nights production of Pippin and the 59th Apple Blossom musical Mamma Mia take place this Friday at 7 p.m. at the Numerica Performing Arts Center. Go to numericapack.org for audition material and information. Bundle Up Event and Sports Fair is this Saturday. Saturday from 11 to 2 at Pibus Public Market. Come check out all the free fun activities for youth in our community, including crafts, s'mores, hay rides, a 5K and kids run, and more. And finally, join Columbia Valley Community Health for the first ever chill out event this Saturday at Lincoln Park in Wenatchee from 11 to 1. CVCH has partnered with KW3, Wells Fargo, and their supporting sponsors to put sleds in the hands of children across the valley to help and encourage them to get out, enjoy the fresh air, and stay active this winter. Enjoy free sleds, hot chocolate, and fun. For more information on this weekend's events and others, visit the community calendar at ncwlife.com. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. AC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. You want to help others. You need a solid career. You can have both with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, stop by our campus at 595 Grant Road across from Safeway or visit chartercollege.edu. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Time now for our weekly Kennel Cameos feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, NCW Life's Megan McPherson introduces us to Palpatine the Cat. Hey everyone, Megan here with the NCW Life Channel. We're here with Renee Parkins, the Development Officer of the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, and Palpatine is joining us this week. He's a little shy, so he's gonna hang out there. Hang out where he feels yeah. nice and safe, but um, yeah, he's a little shy. The shelter can be hard for strays that come in, and that's exactly what he is. Um, but he is very sweet. He's very friendly once he kind of warms up to you. Um, he's got a motor that doesn't <laughs> stop, so. That's a plus, and he really likes treats, <laughs> as we have found in the last couple minutes we've been here. So, um, but yeah, I think he's he's ready for a, for a home, and I think he's looking for someplace quiet, okay. um, probably with no kids or older, more mellow kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't know if he gets along with other cats or dogs, since we don't know much about him, but um, we do know that... Um, you know, he does, he's shy, but he takes a little bit, but once he warms up, he's, he's pretty friendly. Okay. 
And what should someone do if they want to adopt him? Somebody wants to adopt him, they should come down and meet him, um, take him to one of the get acquainted through him and see if he's going to be a fit for their family. And then um, he is ready to go home so they can just pay the $65 adoption fee, which covers uh, vaccinations, neuter, and microchip, and take him home today. The Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. This has been Kendall Cameos at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to all of those details, let's take a look. What happened this afternoon? We know what happened out there. It snowed. It snowed a lot in some areas. This was the scene at around 2.30 or 3 o'clock this afternoon, downtown Wenatchee, and we can barely see the buildings downtown. The Cascadian was in view uh, earlier as we started the newscast from this afternoon, and it's been that kind of day today with snow showers uh, becoming pretty heavy at times after lunch, and we've seen that on and off today. Unofficially high temperatures today, not that warm. In fact, we started started off at about 26 or 27 degrees and we just didn't warm up that much folks. Unofficial high temperature just above 30 degrees as we take a look at our almanac. 31 is all we could muster unofficially. 33 is where we should be for this time of year. Our normal low temperature is 24 degrees. Record high 54 set back in 1983 and even zero. That was our low temperature record on this date and that was set in 1974. So far today two one hundredths of an inch of precipitation that certainly is going to go up as we get together once again on Monday and we're going to talk some pretty big precipitation totals probably on Monday. Uh, we're at five one hundredths of an inch now since January 1st. Sunrise this morning 746 sunset now at an even 430. Let's take a look at how your Saturday will shape up now as we get into the upcoming weekend. The thing we'll notice about tomorrow a little bit warmer temperatures throughout the area and not as snowy but temperature wise 43 Moses Lake 40 42 of Freda and 40 in Quincy, 38 for you folks down in Ellensburg. We will see 39 in Wenatchee, so certainly some warmer temperatures tomorrow with less cloudiness and less moisture out there. 38 in Antioch, 37 in Chelan, and 36 for you folks up in Omac in Okanagan County. Surface loop now, and there's a lot to show you, especially tonight, and then we have another bigger storm system that will move in as we get into the end of the weekend, especially on Sunday. So here we go tonight, a 30% chance of snow. We'll see some gradual clearing late. There's the first surge of moisture. Here's that storm system that's just off the northwest coast of Washington State right now. That will move to the southeast and park itself right over the state of Washington for Saturday. So that will bring us a 40% chance of rain. Yes, rain. We're going to see temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. We just showed you that for Saturday. So not a lot of snow accumulating for Saturday. Sunday, another pretty big uh, winter storm moves in. It's the same storm, and we will not only see snow, but maybe some breezy conditions on Sunday. So blowing and drifting snow, especially you folks in the Columbia Basin is a possibility for Sunday. As we get into Monday, another weather change, mostly cloudy. And yeah, here comes the cold. This area in pink and purple below zero temperatures. These are all 30s and below. We are going to be lucky to even see 20 degrees as we get into Tuesday. Very cold with highs only in the mid teens, lows in the single digits. And then as we go into Tuesday, mostly cloudy, still going to be cold out there, and another storm moves in late in the day on Wednesday. That'll bring us a 30% chance for snow, unseasonably cold, and then things as we get into Thursday will get a little bit better. But I'm telling you, get ready for some very cold weather by the first part of next week, a 40% chance of snow on Thursday. Look at all of the instability around the Northwest as we get into next week. So it looks like winter has arrived here in North Central Washington. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling seven day forecast. Tonight, a little bit below 30 for overnight low, 29 degrees. There's that warm temperature for tomorrow. So we're thinking a rain snow mix, 39 degrees for our high temperature, a 60% chance for snow, probably about an inch or so on Sunday and 35. And then get ready for the cool down. Monday, we'll see mostly cloudy skies and 25 degrees, uh, 17 for the high on Tuesday, four degrees. You're seeing that right for the 
an overnight low on Tuesday, 14 for a high Wednesday, and then a little bit better on Thursday with the chance for snow. Afternoon temperatures then at 21 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Friday to you. Now that Mike Leach has left Washington State for Mississippi State, the search for a new football coach in Pullman is underway. News broke yesterday morning with a tweet by the athletic director at MSU saying the deal was done and they'd sign Leach away from WSU. Possible candidates to replace Leach are his former defensive coordinator Alex Grinch, who is the D coordinator at Oklahoma. Also mentioned as possible candidates are Boise State coach Brian Harson, Central Michigan coach Jim McElwain, and and USC offensive coordinator Graham Harrell. WSU athletic director Paul Chun has the task of replacing the man who was the third winningest coach in Cougar history. Well, let's dive into the Les Schwab prep scoreboard from Thursday. First of all, in girls bowling, Wenatchee swept two games and two bakers from Sunnyside to top the Grizzlies 1,974 pins to 1477. Kyla Hankins led the way with a 210 and 184. Alicia Ferguson rolled a 181, while Mackenzie Monroe bowled a 180. Jaden Thompson chipped in at 176. Panthers improved to 8 and 2 on the season with the win. The Wenatchee Panthers hosted the East Mall Wildcats in boys swimming and diving yesterday. Wenatchee came out on top 136 to 46 at the Wenatchee High School pool. Coming up tomorrow, East Mont, Moses Lake and Wenatchee will take part in the Kentridge Invite that starts tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Turning to the Les Schwab Prep Wrestling Scoreboard from last night, Sunnyside beat Eastmont 61-18. Moses Lake had no trouble with Davis, winning at 72-6, and Othello beat Efreda in Seawack Wrestling 52-19. On the girls' side last night at Eastmont High School, Sunnyside came on, on top 72-6. Now coming up this weekend, Efreda is in Post Falls, Idaho for the River City Duels. That's today and tomorrow. Also tomorrow. Shalan wrestles at the Warden Invite beginning at 9. 9.45 start time. Cashmere begins its quest at the Sky Valley Invitational in Sultan. The Brewster, Eastmont and Quincy boys will join 12 other teams at Cascades Invite beginning at 10 tomorrow. The Freda, Quincy, Moses Lake and Wenatchee girls teams are in Kelso for their invite beginning today and resumes tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Girls basketball last night. Uh, Brewster mauled Manson 46-14. to Pateras topped Eddie at 49-30 34 and Waterville Mansfield continued its winning ways with a 61-11 win over Bridgeport. On the boys' side last night, Brewster scored 95 points and a 43-point win over Manson. Pateras topped any at 63-52 and a double overtime. How about that one? Bridgeport edged Waterville Mansfield 79-77. Coming up tonight in girls basketball, well, it all begins at 5:45 with Moses Lake traveling to Eisenhower. Ifrida hosts Othello. Toppenish plays at Quincy. Omac hosts Cashmere and Highland plays at Cascade. At 6, Chelan's on the road at Okanagan. And at 6.30 tonight at the Town Toyota Center, Eastmont takes on Wadachi in the basketball showcase. By the way, we'll have uh, three games on the uh, from the Town Toyota Center tonight, beginning at 6.30 with the Unified game. We'll follow that up with the girls' game at about 7.30, then the boys' game at about 8.45. I'll be along courtside with Grant Olson for all the action right here. Let's take a look at the rest of the boys' schedule for tonight. Games beginning at 7.15 have Othello, Addy Freda, Toppa de Quincy, Cashmere, and Omac, Okanagan hosting Chelan and Highland at Cascade. Moses Lake plays in Eisenhower at 7.30. And then the uh, boys game between Wenatchee Eastmont at the Town Toyota Center should tip up at about 8.15. Of course, we'll have that a little bit later on the NCW Life Channel. Coming up tomorrow in girls basketball action, Cashmere hosts Medical Lake at 3. Prosser at Tifreda, while Quincy travels to Sela at 3.30. 5.45 is West Valley at Moses Lake. Eastmont at Davis and Wenatchee hosts Eisenhower, which we'll have live on the NCW Life Channel. Grant Olson on the play-by-play. -play. Then at 6, it's Warden at Chelan, Manson hosting Omac, and Lake Roosevelt plays at Waterville Mansfield. Here's the schedule for the boys tomorrow, beginning at 4.30 in Cashmere, where the Bulldogs host Medical Lake. Prosser plays at Efreda, while Quincy's in Sela at 5. And then at 7.30, Eastmont plays at Davis. Moses Lake hosts West Valley. Eisenhower's at Wenatchee, and we'll have that one live on the NCW Life Channel with Grant on the play-by-play. -play. Also at 7.30 tomorrow, it's Chelan hosting Warden, Omax at Manson, and Waterville Mansfield hosts Lake Roosevelt. Well, we're pleased to report that David is off the balcony at the Town Toyota Center. Celebrate good times. Come on. We did it, Wild fans. That's 500 tickets sold. 
four days up here on the balcony, we reached our goal of 500 for the bunker and the Thomas A. Biddle Foundation. First off, I want to stop and thank the players. They tweeted out, and Overland's tweet got seen by some great fans, and they decided to call and push us over the top, and they're donating those tickets to the vets. So we have lots of tickets to donate, and we are ready to celebrate. <laughs> Get the camera off me here, folks. <laughs> David Rayfield has been camping out on the balcony all week, selling tickets to raise money for the Bunker and the Thomas A. Biddle Foundation. Uh, his goal of 500 reached yesterday afternoon, just in time for today's snowstorm. Military Appreci Appreciation Night coming up January 18th. Meanwhile, the Wild are on the road this weekend for a game tonight at Powell River at 7. Then Sunday afternoon at 2, they'll play in Nanaimo. When actually his next home game is a week from tonight when they'll host Cowichan Valley. Well, the Seahawks have several question marks heading into the offensive line for Sunday's game at Green Bay. Dwayne Brown is still nursing a sore knee after surgery. Mike Cupati still is recovering from a neck stinger. And George Fant didn't practice yesterday because of a pulled groin. All three players were put on the questionable list yesterday. That left the side of the offensive line will have its hands full with the Packers' Zadarius Smith, who comes in with 13 and a half sacks this season. Green Bay is bracing for a snowstorm to hit Lambeau Field tomorrow night with six to eight inches of snow and heavy winds. Sunday's forecast is for some partly cloudy skies and 23 degrees. Here's a look at the playoff schedule for the weekend. It's supposed to be sunny and 67 tomorrow afternoon in Santa Clara where San Francisco hosts Minnesota at 135 on NBC. Then the Titans and Ravens kick off at 515 in Baltimore under rain and temperatures in the 60s in CBS. Uh, there's a winter storm warning in Kansas City tonight but things are supposed to moderate with temperatures in the mid 30s for Sunday's 105 kickoff between the Chiefs and Houston Texans on CBS. And then you have the Seattle and Green Bay wrap up the weekend with a 340 kickoff at Lambeau Field. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And as we leave you tonight, good news for cross-country skiers is the Forest Service Road to the Echo Ridge Nordic Ski Area opened this week. It's about 10 miles from Chelan. This unique cross-country skiing area has more than 25 miles of groomed trails and includes views of the Enchantments, Pyramid Peak, and the Okanagan Highlands. There's a drop box to pay for using those trails with a cost of $10 per day for adults. Kids 17 and younger can ski for free. Remember, if you have a video of the day that you'd like to see on the NCW Life Evening News, message us right on our Facebook page page at the NCW Life Channel. Now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up Monday morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. I hope everybody has a safe weekend. If you enjoy the snow, get out and enjoy the snow. And as Grant mentioned in the weather forecast, get ready for some really cold weather next week. My guest on Monday is actually not my guest. Stevie Hare, our special news correspondent, had a chance to sit down and talk to Corey Stevens, who's the Chelan County Juvenile Court Administrator. It's a fascinating conversation. We'll have that for you on Monday. Plus, we'll wrap up the weekend that was in sports with lots of highlights. Go Seahawks! Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday live 7 a.m. on Wake Up on Anchee Valley. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email. That's at news at ncwlife.com. Or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us. and Have a great weekend. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Local Miss Pizza.
Greeks, and we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house, fresh, daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. 